All right, let's talk about uh, finalizing UV layouts and what to do uh, after you have a UV layout finalized. So uh, a couple things to think about as you do a UV layout. It's uh, sort of a compromise between how much distortion you're going to allow and how many seams you're going to have. Seams you have to come back and fix after the fact. Uh, and uh, also uh, having a lot of seams can often make it where it's really difficult to understand what you're trying to paint in Photoshop or wherever you're painting. Um, so it's a compromise you have to sort of come to um, sort of a happy medium for yourself um, to figure out how many seams and how much distortion. In this case I decided to go with a little bit more distortion. You can see these are getting distorted through here. It's obviously highly distorted across the nose here because there's no way this could lay out flat the way it is. Uh, but this will make it way easier for me to paint and I don't really need this to be perfect. Um, this is another thing is if you need to, if I wanted to put stripes on this guy, perfect stripes around him, then I would have to have this be really distortion free. But as it is, uh, I'm not planning on doing anything like that. Everything I'm going to do is very organic. And so if it stretches or squashes here or there, it's not going to really make any difference. So this is a good compromise in my case. I can clearly understand what I'm looking at. I can paint on this very easily in Photoshop. So this is what I've decided to do um, in terms of my layout. Um, also, one other thing to, to note here is the eyes have been doubled up here just to give me a little bit more texture resolution. And you can actually see that by the squares being smaller, these actually do have more texture resolution than the rest of the body here. I had the space and I might as well use it. Um, high resolution eyes will look nice. This is uh, something that other folks might do on, let's say for instance, the whole head. Oftentimes for a human character, the face will get more dominance in the UV map. So it'll be a little bit bigger. Um, that'll be the focus of what you look at oftentimes on a, on a character. And so they'll give that a little bit more uh, texture resolution uh, because of that. In this case, it should all be basically the same. There's not going to be any high detail or wrinkles or anything like that going on up in the face. Okay, so uh, once, you're, once you're happy with your layout, select all the objects that are supposed to be part of that layout and do polygons, UV snapshot. And in here, just make sure you set your path where you want it to go. Looks fine for me. I set it to the size that you want. Again, it's better to work larger and size down. Uh, in my case, I'm probably just going to stick with 2048. So I'll set this up to 2048 output. Um, I like going out to pings. That'll work fine. Just be a smaller file size and uh, have transparency. So just click OK. And my UI was here, uh, you would be able to see that it output, but that message is already gone. So uh, I'll just go back to uh, Photoshop now and open that file up. Um, maybe I wasn't paying great attention to where that went. Let me find it. Okay, so it went to the images directory instead of my textures directory. I should have paid attention to that path a little bit more. At any rate, this is the file. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and rename this layer to UVs. And then I'm going to act actually add a layer group here. And this is the way we're going to organize this file so that we can stack all of our texture maps into one PSD. This is the recommended workflow for Maya. There are a few quirks about the workflow that I'll talk about, but uh, this the, the quirks are far outweighed by the benefits. So first one I'm going to do is color. So I'm just going to name a uh, group uh, color. Go ahead and add um, a layer here for the background. And for my colors, I want to make sure I'm not full black and, and uh, I don't want to be full white either. Uh, this allows me to get highlights and shadows uh, onto what I'm doing. So I want to go ahead and make the base color this white color. Uh, I'm going to make sort of a panda bear. And then I'm going to make selected areas black. I'm just going to do that just by um, doing a magnetic lasso around this thing. And I'm not going to worry about being uh, too detailed with this. It's, I'm just going to try to basically get a, a something to show you how it would work. And then I, this is not going to be a Photoshop tutorial, so I'm just going to leave it alone after that. I'm going to work on, an, on another layer here. Okay, fill that black. And then save this as a PSD. Uh, this will allow us to automatically update in uh, Maya. And like I said before, I can, we can actually add multiple color groups or multiple texture groups here. 
All right, so I'm going to go up to textures, where's where I actually want this. Okay, so head back to Maya here. Okay, so to hook this up, um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and, and use a blend. Name this. Uh, oh, this is the material, so bare mat. And then I'm going to click the checker here to map uh, a texture to it. And I don't want to use the file node in this case. I want to make sure I use the PSD file. So I'll grab the PSD file, and I'll show you why we do that in just one second. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Um, interesting. Okay, that's the guy. And if you ever get this business here, just double click on the sample and it'll refresh. It's sort of a goofy little quirk um, with Maya. And so now we are hooked up, but we haven't made uh, a selection we need to make, but I'm gonna show you what we're actually looking like uh, when I assign that. So I'll just right click and I'll try to do this a little higher so it comes into the screen. Assign existing material, bare mat. Okay, so this is the first quirk of using PSDs. Um, you can sort of see through it, which obviously we don't want. I didn't hook up transparency, but it automatically hooks up with the PSD. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do this. Most likely, yours will be set up with merge connections set to on. So let me just go ahead and turn that on. So most likely this is what you'll see, a one arrow between these things with a list of what's actually there. Uh, in this case, don't want that, so I'm going to go ahead and go under Options, turn Merge Connections off, and then go to the Transparency, click the arrow, it'll turn yellow, and then just press Delete. And that'll drop that transparency, and you see everything looks as it should. Uh, and now the next thing is you can see that the UVs are showing up on him. So I can actually see the UVs that I output now uh, projected back onto the mesh. Um, so what I want to do here is um, whoops, uh, go into the texture node and this right here link to layer set. This is the reason that you want to use PSDs in the first place. We don't want the composite, we want to use color. So you can see what it does is it actually loads up every um, group that you put in there uh, and you can select that as an individual um, texture which is really cool this way we can put our color our spec map our bump map um, any other maps um, into the, the one PSD file that we have to keep track of so I'll change that and I'll just double click the sample here and you'll notice again that Maya has hooked up transparency for us which we don't want this is again this is it seems like a very annoying uh, quirk and it is but uh, there there's a way around it for uh, refreshing so I'll show you how to do that now so here I have uh, my basic colors working I would need to create a stripe around here and obviously I don't want to have anything hard edged like this I don't want to leave these things uh, real hard like this so I'll need to decide which one I want to paint up to black and which one I want to paint down um, to white to, to blur it together so I'll just do some of that down here on the leg and pull this back up zoom in here a little bit okay so this should be my upper leg right here uh, so probably what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, drop some of this black out of here and I would use a mask if I was doing anything more detailed but since this is a solid color it's going to be just as easy just to erase it out. Um, so, But I, I do want to make sure that I don't accidentally get any of the other areas around this. So I'm just going to marquee this out so I know exactly where I'm working like that. And then I'll just erase this off where it has a, a soft edge along the top. Okay. So now the things that are going to mess this up that I'll need to fix in 3D is most likely this side and this side, which do wrap together, I won't have erased them out exactly the same. So I'll need to seam that up in 3D, which I'll show you in another video. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Go back to Maya. And in Maya, uh, what I want to do is refresh that texture um, without actually using the refresh. So in, uh, in the rendering menu set under texturing, 
there's something that says update PSD networks. If you do this, which I'll do it right now, you see it hooks your transparency back up, which is super lame. Um, not not a big fan of that as a default action uh, and I'm not entirely sure if you can turn it off if you can I haven't been able to find that yet so anyways I want to make sure that is off um, and then I'll show you how to actually do it but now you can see that's this is kind of working looks okay and inside just as expected there are a couple of little glitches here that I would need to come back and, and paint out in fact I haven't gotten this quite clean enough this needs to be full um, full white here so it does blend in so I'll head back to Photoshop and uh, take care of that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, one more time uh, brush that just take it down again out to full white like that okay uh, so that should be enough to see the difference so I'll just save it here back to Maya and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the attribute editor. I'll go to bare mat and open the color. And when you open the color, it force refreshes. Um, when you open the, the, the texture rather in the attribute editor, it force refreshes, but it doesn't relink anything else. So you can see I don't have my texture issue, uh, my transparency issue rather. And it looks like I actually did take care of this. It's a little bit of a black corner. Um, this is actually just kind of an overspray or a bad magnetic lasso work. This is the seam stuff that I'll have to fix a little bit later. Um, so I would just go back and forth. I'll do it one more time just to make sure everything's perfectly clear. Back uh, over here, I'll just do this. Um, looks like that's the little corner that I uh, messed up ac accidentally here. So let me just go ahead and erase that out anyways. Oh got something selected on the other side of the map here okay so just drop that out like that and then I do want to go ahead and make sure I don't accidentally overspray here or over erase in this case okay okay save that again back to Maya and the same thing would happen uh, you can go through the hypershade which is what I typically do if I have a little bit more of screen real estate in the texture section right here you can just uh, double click this and that will automatically refresh uh, without changing any of your connections so everything will still be proper so here you can see that it's just got the color connection so that's the sort of workaround about the, the automatically hooking up transparency and this one looks like it worked out pretty well uh, I got a little bit more that we need to take out here and then obviously I need to come back and make some seam adjustments here uh, but I'm on the right path here so that's the workflow uh, back and forth um, and let me just pull this back up for one more thing just just to make this uh, perfectly clear as well if I wanted to add a spec color it would just be adding a new color group at the root level like this and call it spec and now when I go into Maya, I'll have the option, once I save, um, to pick either one of those um, groups. So let's back into the hypershade here. And this guy. So here, instead of just having color, um, maybe, I, maybe I didn't get the save to work in uh, Photoshop here. No, oh, it's saved. There it is. Okay, so sometimes there's just a little bit of a slow uh, connection, but typically when you um, save in Photoshop and come over to Maya, um, when this refreshes, it'll automatically have your new layer groups, which here you can see now I could pick whichever one I want. In, in this case, spec is empty, so it's it's worthless for me to grab now. But that's the workflow, um, and so I'll... Uh, crank back up once I've got this finished up in Photoshop and, uh, and show you guys how to seam it up.